Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are down at our local community college. This is the third year that we are going to be planting up a bunch of flower beds and a bunch of containers with beautiful flowers. This is such a fun project because they have a phenomenal team of people uh, who take care of these plants and they look so good all season long, all the way up until a really hard frost. It's months and months of beautiful color. This year though, I'm really excited about it because we had friends from three different states travel to help us with this project and they're going to be joining us here in just a little bit. I um, actually came a little bit early to start placing plants because I feel like that's going to be the slowest part and then they're going to come in and help us aug holes, place biotone in the holes, plant the flowers. So we might be able to whip through this in what one to two days? Aaron's already bringing plants I'm out. I'm hopeful. <laughs> Yeah, it usually takes us days and days and days to get this project done because it's usually just Aaron and I. Last year we had a little bit of extra help um, helping us like move plants from one place to another, but I think it's going to be so much fun. So we are loaded. <laughs> we are loaded with drills and augers and batteries and plants. These entry beds, let me open this up. They are going to be filled with red, white, and blue. Americana theme this year. So this is our biggest entry bed here. There are two pots on either side. There's a planting bed right underneath the sign and then this big area down below. Full, full sun, no protection from anything and no wind uh, protection. It's just a very exposed spot, but it always looks pretty. Yeah. So we've got the boldly dark red geraniums which this is the only plant here that's gonna require any kind of deadheading. Uh, and then we've got Supertunia Mini Vista White, Mini Vista Indigo, and Mini Vista Scarlet. And then up here we have more stuff. Purple Fountain Grass and a bunch of Play in the Blue Salvia. So the only thing I'm unsure about in this space, we did not add any sweet potato vine, which last year we added maybe too much. So I knee jerked and decided not to put any in here. We're gonna get everything laid out and decide if we want to tuck in just a little bit of that chartreuse green because it does add a bright pop and a cooling element. Or we might uh, do some lemon coral sedum. I do have some, I ordered some extra of those just in case we decided to use those. So anyway, the process here is laying out the plants, digging holes, fertilizer, planting, and then uh, Rosa from the college here is going to be uh, coming through and watering everything. Or are we watering today? Uh, Rosa water. Rosa's watering. Okay. So, I mean, it's just taking a tremendous team of people to get this together today, and I'm just so thankful for it. So I'm going to be stopping just kind of throughout the day, giving you guys updates. Probably when we get one area completed, um, we'll take a look at that area, and we'll just see how much we can get done. So I'm going to get started with the plant placing here. All right, guys, we got this front bed done so fast that part of our crew didn't even have time to show up. <laughs> it's crazy when you have multiple hands. So I wanna walk you through this area real quick. But first, I would like to introduce you to part of our crew today. <laughs> so we have Gabe and Heidi and Katie and Molly. That's all one family, not the whole family, nope. but a lot of the family and they're from Seattle. And there's Amy who helped us out last year and is helping us again today and for the rest of the summer watering at our house. It makes a project exponentially more fun when you've got people, friends around you and you can chat and visit the whole time. And um, just, I don't know, I, I just feel so good about this project. And I think this is going to be phenomenal. I was a little bit worried, like I said, I didn't know if I would like it without the potato vine, but I think it's gonna be such an impact with color that we're not gonna miss it. So we did some groups of potato, of, uh, Purple fountain grass, rather. There's two, and then three, and then three, four, three, two, three. Yeah, yeah, three. <laughs> One's got a tuck behind the rock. 
and two right there. And then a huge drift of Play in the Blue Salvia. There's like, I don't know, 35 or 40 of them in here. No, I don't remember. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's seven up in the triangular bed right below the sign. And then the rest of them went down here. But you guys know this is going to be a really fun before and after because these plants are really small right now, but they grow two to four feet tall about that wide blue blooms amazing color all summer long and those will be a step down from the purple found grass we'll have nice layering so that's the all the green so that's all the green that you're seeing right there and then in front of that we did all the mini vistas and just kind of interspersed the color let's pop up here and take a look this one will take a minute because the soil level is kind of low but you guys know what the vista super tunias do they will grow up mound and come over the edges so we've got our blue element in the back the seven play in the blues then we've got 25 of the red geraniums and then we've got the white so we'll have the red white and blue in here i think it'll be great and then we've got our two pots here purple fountain grass three of the red geraniums aren't these just pretty and you can see a representation beautiful representation of what we're going to be seeing here uh you know once all the flowers start to appear so grass in the center three geraniums i did two of the minibus indigos three of the whites and two of the scarlets one on either side what took us like the better part of a day last year just took us about an hour maybe an hour and a half <laughs> we're gonna head to the next entrance bed so you guys this is the next bed right here the next entrance so quite a bit smaller but we're going to mirror the same sort of color scheme all the same plants in this area and you can see we've got the two pots on either side the little uh, bed right there and then this area to plant. It's kind of an odd one though, because like the, the corner here doesn't line up. That just gets me. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. It messes with the balance here. So we are going to do a quick weeding job here and then we'll get to planting. We actually skipped the biotone on the first bed. We're gonna go back through and add that in. We forgot the bag. So Paul's bringing that down along with plants right now. So we'll head back up there in a little while and make sure we add some to the soil around the plants. guys second entrance bed is done rosa is watering already making things very happy and here's the rest of our crew we have christy from california and we have kelsey and avery from minnesota it looks so good i'm so excited all right guys we are heading to the courtyard fountain area next to tackle that and that's the biggest in-ground planting we're going to be doing today but I am amazed at how fast this is going. All right, guys, so this is the courtyard right here. Uh, they are working on a fountain for the center area, but there are eight triangular shaped beds, two at every corner, so two, four, six, eight, that we fill up every year. Now, most of them have trees established in them, I think, except for two. Um, so there's two, I think these are crab apples right here. It looks like they, or, they already got done blooming, they've already set, some fruit right here but they bring a really pretty color and there's a, a perennial ornamental grass perennial salvia and some black eyed susans and i think that's just kind of repeated throughout that's in that bed over there this one looks pretty full right here yeah that one's got quite a bit in it so we're just basically filling in the gaps and I love it when we're down here planting every year, the salvia looks awesome. I think this is the variety May night. But the thing about perennials in high impact areas like this is that they don't look amazing for the whole season. You know, when you're planting annuals and you know, a lot of commercial areas and areas like this at schools, they plant a lot of annuals because they're in color the entire season from the moment you plant them until a hard frost takes them and perennials usually flush in and out of bloom. So like these are in bloom now and will be for a few weeks and then they'll need to be cut back and then it takes them a while to flush back and they will bloom again, uh, but it just takes time and then there's little holes in this space. But ornamental grasses, trees, things like that are always structural and always look really great. And I actually like the Rudbeckia too because that one comes up and blooms later and it doesn't cycle in and out. It just stays in bloom for the rest of the season once it starts to bloom, like mid to late summer. Looks like we've already got some plants over here. Amy is checking them out, getting all the tags taken out. So these beds over here, there is a tree, but it's a lot smaller. And you can see that this one's exposed. Tons of sun over here. There are no trees in these two beds right here. So typically we put some vertigo penicetum in those 
which grow really big to kind of take up some of that space. This bed right here is definitely the most full. So we are doing a mix of purple fountain grass, super tunia vista jazzberry, surefire uh, white begonias. What else? Uh, salvia played in the blues. I think it's primarily those plants. We might sub in some extras because I did plan on planting Bordeaux and I didn't get those plants. I didn't get enough at least for this area. Oh my goodness. Now those are bright, aren't they? Wow. So All right guys, so you know the drill. We're gonna do the same thing here and then I will walk you through and show you how it looks in the end. All right, guys, we just got the courtyard done. It took us one hour, while last year it took us almost, I think almost six, maybe between five and six hours. So it's just amazing. And I'm really happy with the plant choice this year because last year we had a lot of different things going on and we had a lot of cannas in here, which the cannas did great, but I had yellow and coral. And I think maybe if I would have just chosen one color, it would have looked a little less messy. There was a little too much going on for my eye. I mean, they, would, they were full of color and beautiful. Everything did great, but I'm just really happy with the plants this year, choosing fewer variety and using a little bit more of each one of those. So like in these open beds here, you can see little groupings of purple fountain grass just plopped here and there. And then we went in with the uh, play in the blue salvia because that's our next layer down. So you'll see groupings of those and then ringed around the edge with the Super Tunia Vista Jazzberry and Sweet Caroline Light Green. Now you'll notice on the grass side of these, I did not do any sweet potato vine because they tend to be the most aggressive grower and I don't want them coming out over the grass all over the place. So I just went around the edges that have concrete. In the beds that don't have trees, we did a little bit of purple fountain grass, but also see these grasses that look green right now? Those are the vertigos. So those will get six to eight feet tall and they turn a deep maroon color. They're so striking and beautiful. And if you need something that's striking and centerpiece and kind of wow factor, that's the grass to go with for sure. Take a look at these over here. So here's your before shot. In just one month's time, these beds will be so full. So we did the same planting plan, you know, the purple fountain grass and then the play in the blue salvia, but underneath the trees where it's shadier, we did the surefire white begonias. So those did not end up in the sunnier beds. They can take sun or shade, but I just wanted to have those more in the shady spots. That white I think will really show. Yeah, see, look at this. I think having that jazzberry and that chartreuse green, they just look so vibrant and beautiful together. And then you can see the surefire whites right in here in the shadier spot. And over here, I think it's just gonna be gorgeous. So that's all the in-ground planting we are going to do today. We are gonna wait to do the gym uh, bed until our Bordeaux comes in. It's gonna actually, we heard from the grower, and it's gonna be here on Friday, just a couple days from now. So we'll go tackle that bed later. I think what we're gonna do is go have some lunch regroup and then bring some flowers back for containers. Alright guys, it's a new day. I decided to come down early uh, before there was a lot of activity so that we could just kind of freely move around this space and take a look. It's also a little bit more shaded so it's easier to see some of the plants, but let me tell you what. What a gift it was to have the people here helping us. I mean, 
taking time out of their lives, flying here, traveling here, driving here, um, just to spend time helping out with a project that benefits our community is just, hmm, that's awesome. I just, I'm so thankful for them. I wanted to start here in the courtyard because we got all the containers done, 14 total. And then we headed to the baseball diamonds and we did all seven of those massive pots. So in the end, I've got a few just kind of random containers sprinkled throughout the campus that we're gonna come back and tackle. And then the bed at the gym once those flowers arrive, which I think they're supposed to be here sometime today. So we'll probably come in the next couple days to get that all finished up. Kind of nice, look at this. You can see the drip system is working and see where it's moistened the soil. And they are gonna come in with mulch here in the next little bit as well, just to kind of top dress these beds, but I think they're gonna be wonderful. Now here in the fountain area, there are four rectangular shaped containers and we did them all the same. We do that every year just so that there's, you know, kind of a unified look. And I used the Misty Seas recipe from Proven Winners that I tried last year and loved. So we've got the blue Mohawk Junkus right here as the centerpiece, Super Tunia Mini Vista White, Mini Vista Violet Star, and Mini Vista Indigo. And this thing, you guys, soon we won't even be able to see this container because these Mini Vistas, they just grow like crazy. But this grass, which this is what surprised me about it last year, it held its own and it looked like a firework coming out of the display of flowers. Um, and it didn't still focus, like it was a vertical element that was still very strong, but it really blended with the plants beautifully. It actually surprised me quite a bit because typically I don't like striped petunias, or I haven't in the past. And maybe it's because I haven't had the right variety or the right mix of plants, but this one, it just, I loved it. And I think it's a very cool look in this area. For most of the day, it tends to be fairly sunny and warm. So I think it'll kind of visually bring the temperature down a little bit. Okay, let's head over to this building right here. Okay, the Student Services Center here. This is the south side of this building and there aren't trees close enough to shade it. So you guys, like, as soon as the sun comes up, I mean, we're fairly early in the morning here. The side of this building bakes, it gets hot. Uh, you know, these pots are on concrete, they are concrete, they're right by windows that are reflecting light, lots and lots of heat, but the plants we put in here usually do really well. They're all full sun loving, and I think it's gonna be real pretty. So right here, these are 25 inch containers. We've got a purple fountain grass. This is the, uh, is this Pink Star? I don't know, we have to put the name on the screen maybe. But again, another little stripy petunia, and it's a mini vista. And then we've got Super Tunia Royal Velvet, and we repeated those, so there's three of each of those, and then three, yeah, three of the Dichondra Silver Falls. So again, very cool colors. They always look really good up against this color of brick, and they visually bring the temperature down again. Right here, there are some unplugged So Blue Salvia. I like using those in containers like this because they don't get so massive like the Play in the Blues. We use Play in the Blues out in the big landscape areas because they're just, they're huge. They can get upwards of four feet tall and wide. Um, the Unplugged So Blue kind of, they create a really beautiful centerpiece, but they aren't so massive so that it doesn't look out of proportion with everything else we've got going. Around it, we used three Super Junior Vista Jazzberry, three of the Sparkling Amethyst Superbina, and four of the Super Junior Mini Vista White. I really like that blend. It's beautiful, especially once we start seeing some blue in the centerpiece. So there are two that are exactly alike. That's the same combination right there in that rectangular shaped pot. And then there's two 21 inch pots, repeated the blue mohawk right here, Super Tunia Bordeaux, Super Tunia, or Super Bina rather, Imperial Blue, and the Violet Star, Mini Vista. Again, cool colors, gonna be gorgeous. And this pot matches that pot right there, and the end pot matches this one. Makes it kind of easy when you, you know, you wanna kinda have this be cohesive. I mean, one could do all of these different, but it might not be, quite as nice, I don't think. I think it's kind of nice to mirror the same size of containers with the same plants. That way there's less fight for your eye. So there you go, repeat of the 25 inch. And there's one more 25 inch up against this building, behind the van, I think. There it is. And this gets full morning sun and is protected, oh, I would say mid-afternoon. But it gets plenty, a plenty block of sun to do really, really nicely. The other three containers are up against this building. This is the building where my brother has an office and he teaches I think he primarily teaches in this building. So we've got two very different light requirements with these two containers. This is on the north side of this enclosure, so it's pretty much full shade all the time. 
This one gets full afternoon sun. So we used the Acapulco sun recipe that I tried last year by our vegetable garden and I loved it so much that I just wanted to repeat it here again because it's just, it was a beautiful blend of plants. We have the Stratosphere White Gara, which ends up being this glorious, very magical centerpiece that has a lot of beautiful movement. We've got Super Tunia Bermuda Beach, Super Bell's Coralina, and the Super Bina Peachy Keen. Love that. Right here we have Lime Time Coleus, which I used a couple, probably only necessary to use one, but it's nice to not have the pots look, you know, really scant in the beginning. That will end up being our big tall centerpiece because those get quite large. And then our uh, Pegasus Begonia just adds that beautiful texture and they'll get a little bit bigger. You know, they'll, I have them get like this big. <laughs> and then I had a few Surefire White Begonias left. So we put four of those in there and then the Terenia. And this is like a large, is it large violet? I don't know, it's been a while since I've planted Terenia. So I'm very much so looking forward to what it does in this area. It's hard to find um, a lot of different variety, I guess, when it comes to shade loving trailing plants with lots of color. And Terenia is supposed to do that very well, so we'll see. It's been so long since I planted it, I almost can't remember. And then around this side, this is probably the hottest container in our entire uh, repertoire this morning. This one is just in this alcove that just gets hammered in the afternoon. And we did the Acapulco Sun in here as well. And boy, we packed it full and it looks so pretty. There are five of the Stratosphere Whites in here. So one in the center and then we flanked it with the other two on either side and then went around with Super Junior Bermuda Beach, Super Bina Peachy Keen and Super Bell's Coralina again. Isn't that just such a pleasing thing to look at right here? One year I did like the heated up, it was a heated up yellow or red Gallardia and some other yellow things. It was very warm. And since this is so sunny, it just had a very hot appearance. It was pretty, like it did really well. Um, but I think I'm gonna like this cool color. Last year I did uh, a purple fountain grass and some Super Junior Royal Velvet Lemon Coral Sedum. And that was pretty as well. All right guys, so that wraps it up for the containers in this area. And the courtyard, you guys, all the in-ground planting in here, that would have taken me so, so long to do, not to mention the fact that we got both entryway beds done before this and we were able to get containers done. It just blows my mind how much we got done in. We started at eight in the morning and we called it at about three. It was just before three. And the amount we got done would have taken me three days. So it was just a massive gift. Okay, baseball diamonds next. Okay, so you can see the baseball diamonds. There's three of them right in here. And there are seven massive pots. Now they all match, so we won't go look at all of them. Uh, but I do want to show you the hawthorn trees in these. There's hawthorns in these two pots that look so beautiful in bloom right now. And the rest of the trees are crab apples, which have already bloomed. And we're guessing that these trees, because they are mature, like mature trees, we're guessing that these pots are actually open on the bottom because it looks like they paved around them as far as we can tell. So I'm thinking that the tree goes all the way down into native soil. I mean, that has to be what's going on here for the trees to be thriving like they are and for you know being as old as they are but isn't this beautiful look at these blooms is this like a Paul Scarlet Hawthorne I'm guessing oh it's just glorious and you can see the same one over there I wanted to take a look at the plants in this location though because it's a little bit more shady you can see we used the surefire cherry cordial Begonias. These are new, I think, this year. And so I was very excited to use them and see how they would do down here because we've got a very a strange mixture of sun and shade here. And there's not a lot of annuals that provide color like the surefire begonias do and can take all kinds of different light. So these will just fill in beautifully. I think we used surefire rose down here last year with a sweet potato vine, and that was it. And they were very striking and very full. Uh, we ringed around those with lemon coral sedum and dichondra silver falls. I think having that contrast, well, first of all, the contrast between this and this, you'll see these a little bit more like they'll contrast the soil more once we've got some height going on. But I think these colors together are just really interesting and I think it's going to be very beautiful. And you can see the same thing here. Boy, that lemon coral just shows up, doesn't it? 
Dang. And then this one gets more morning sun. These get sun pretty much all day. Yeah, my goodness. This one, they had to replace a tree this year. This is a purple prince crab apple. We just planted one in our yard last year. So there was lots of room to plant around that one. But you can see like how much more sun this one's gonna receive than the ones that are protected in the courtyard area and that have larger trees in the containers. It will be interesting to compare them. And it was right about when we were done with these that we thought, you know what, we're all smelling like biotone right now. <laughs> and it got pretty, pretty darn warm. We could see a storm cloud kind of moving in that actually ended up skirting around us. I was super thankful for that. Uh, but we decided, you know what, we got a lot done today. I think that's a great day. And I'm just, yeah, uh, you know, Rosa was following us around. She's the one who takes us or takes care of all of these these plants all season long and she was watering so she would you know water and then show up at the next place that we were working um, and just she's always just so pleasant and a joy to be around so anyway it was just such a beautiful day and thank you to all of my friends who came here uh, to help out with that and Amy who you know lives here and I get to see her on a more consistent basis but thank you to uh, her for coming down and helping out as well it was just a huge group effort and I'm just yeah so grateful and thank you to all of you guys who are watching this video i hope you enjoyed it we will be back down here in the next few days to finish up the kind of the stragglers um that we're waiting on plants for so anyway thank you guys we'll see you in the next video bye